Oh, I see we got some haters over here. What's up, people? It's your man, Herbal Lover, coming from your mama's basement. I'm not even going to talk about that game yesterday. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, there's no point. I mean, there's really no point talking about that game. But I'm going to I'm gonna point out a couple things. And at the end of the day, I hope you guys follow along with me. So, just by watching the game and watching how we started off. Now, keep in mind, all this is taking place right around the time that if y'all didn't notice right now, Cup Check actually said it out of his mouth that we're actually looking to make some trades. He said some players, but the younger players come with a price. That's what he said. If you're not, go Google it. And I know they did look at the freaking uh, Google just like we do. And they hit their names up in trade rumors and stuff like that. So, this, see, this is the thing. First, for, first and foremost, that's why I say start with the front office, then the coaching staff down to the players. Now, they said at the beginning of the season that, you know, it's going to take two to three years, you know, for the young players to develop. You know, we're going to, you know, try to develop the young players. We're going to do all this. This is what he said at the beginning of the season. We're going to develop the young players. We're going to do all this and get the young players more involved and, you know, get them going, you know, and then DeAndre Russell and all of them were hot about it. Oh, yeah, we're excited. You know, this is the beginning of a new season, you know, fresh air. You know, basically saying there's no Byron Scott. Fresh air, you. We're going, we're going to do the, do the damn thing. And that's the year. I mean, as the season goes on, I mean, the first couple games, you know, first 20, 30 games, whatever, 20 games, you might well say. Because he was, what, 10-10 or something like that. You know, the Lakers were like, you know, they were playing with excitement. Time goes on. You see Luke Walton calling out D'Angelo Russell. Same thing Byron Scott did. On the low. One video, he was basically calling D'Angelo. He was looking over the side of the show to see if D'Angelo was even looking at him. If y'all seen that video, that's on Laker Nation. Go back and check their archives when they were asking about D'Angelo Russell. He said a couple other ones. Matter of fact, the last game before they played Phoenix, he was talking about D'Angelo. You know, can I talk about Same thing Byron Scott was doing. And like I said, I'm not going to keep beating up on Luke Walton because, like I said, at the end of the day, Luke Walton, to me, hasn't proved me. I mean, he hasn't proved anything to me, and I'm going to call him out. I don't care if y'all get mad, you know, and say, oh, well, we just tanking, blah, blah, blah. Listen, Luke Walton is nothing but a pawn for the front office. The front office speak through Luke Walton. Simple as that. That's why they got Luke Walton. Luke Walton probably a yes man because him and, him and the front office, him and Kupchak, Kupchak and all them guys are cool. They've been talking to each other way before Luke Walton even got hired. So this was already in the making before, you know, before... They were even thinking about bringing Luke Walton in. They, they were already, they were already probably talking about this a while ago. So, like I said, I ain't gonna talk about the game. I'd like the rotation always, as always, always, as always, always been bad. Simple as that. The rotation stinks. It always stinks. Um, they started Tar Black again, and he got. I mean, it, the interior did look terrible. I mean, even Zoo Black game looked terrible. The whole team, like they didn't have no energy. They like they didn't give a two dams. Excuse my language. They didn't care. It, it, they didn't even freaking. It, it, you can see it, and they by their just by their posure, they didn't look like they wanted to be out there on the floor. You know what I mean? I mean, you you got to think about it. First and foremost, you had all this all this confidence in a, in a coach that's going to tell you that, yeah, I'm gonna play you guys, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And over the course of the season, all these guys are getting this 20, 25 minutes. Brandon Ingram is getting more pops than anybody on the team. Period. And Brandon Ingram is, is not even really showing anything. I'm just being honest. I mean, yeah, you know, he's 19 years old. We keep making excuses, blah blah, but he's getting. 20 30 minutes and you should see some type of formality in his game i mean eventually you know yeah he had a couple games where he looked all right but then once again same thing with d'angelo he had the same stigma d'angelo had you know a couple games look good and a couple games he looked like he's not even there you know and i feel bad for all of them and reason why and really not so much for brandon because he's a rookie but for d'angelo julius all them guys you know i was hyped about this season i was very hyped about this season I was one of the big ego type of guys that say, yeah, we're going to win 30 games. The Lakers, Lakers looking good, you know. Oh, my gosh. Now I'm smacking myself in the face. And I and I still say to this day, these guys are not bummed. They're, they're probably B, I say B players, not B plus yet, but they're they still young. The only biggest problem is, like I said, they're not getting the minutes. And when people sit there, and this, this is the thing. This is why I know that a lot of fans are really not basketball fans. They just watch us to watch it. And the problem is that most of them probably NBA 2K you know, fans that just – play basketball on, on video games because at the end of the day like i said before and i say over and over again you cannot sit up here and tell me that you're going to see a player dominate 25 minutes every game some play time they only get 20 minutes 19 minutes so how are you going to ever get into a flow when you're getting pulled out matter of fact i'm gonna go back to that game the second unit when the second unit got him down by 12 what did luke walton do he pulled the whole team he pulled them you married an analyst. And see, this is the thing. Even the analysts are noticing this. But nobody in, in Tinseltown is going to talk about Luke Walton. Not Magic Johnson. 
Even Stephen A. Smith don't talk bad about him. Nobody going to talk bad about Lou Wong, but they're going to keep pointing on them players. And the dumb fan base that keep on believing in that bull crap is going to say the same exact things. When I go on these other pages and other channels, I be sitting there watching, you know, Laker, some of these Laker fans, oh, D'Angelo's a bust. Brandon Ingram's a bust. You know, and then the non-Laker fan, oh, yeah, they suck, this and this and that. Not paying, in, not paying in mind that these guys are only getting 20, 25 minutes. And I said over and over again, what plan in your right mind do you see getting 20, I'm um, with starter, and, and they right mind is getting 20, 25 minutes. Most of these stars are getting 35 and up. You know what I mean? Only time they probably get 30 is when they blowing you up. Blowing you out or they in foul trouble or, you know, or they just ain't going. But usually most average starters get 35 minutes. These guys not getting 35 minutes. And after a while, you hear about you, you know, about the trades, you know, come to your trade, and Magic Johnson come out and say he wants to be involved in the trade deadline. Come on, guys. Listen, I told y'all guys. This Lake organization is not a type of type of organization that got patience. They're not like a lot of fans that have patience and let the young guys, de you know, develop. And Lou Walton is not letting these young guys develop. So I hope y'all get it through your heads and your mind. He's not even playing them enough. You know what I mean? And he's showcasing Lou Williams because they're looking to trade Lou Williams. That's why Lou Williams is getting all his playing time and, and getting an opportunity. To let, that's why they're giving Lou Williams the green light. Lou Williams is going to be set up in a trade. But here's the problem. Who are we going to trade for Lou Williams? We gonna get some defensive players, uh, some wings. What are we going to get for Lou Williams? I mean, I'm just being honest. Who gonna really, you know, make? I mean, like a lot of teams could use him, but what are they gonna give us for Lou Williams? Cause they know we. At the end of the day, they probably think we're desperate. Yeah, well, the Lakers suck anyway. They probably desperate. They just, just throw him a hot dog and some, some chips and and somebody that can, that, they can fall on the floor or something. I don't know, man. So, like I said today, the guys, they, it's, it's messing with them mentally. You know what I mean? If you hear your name in the trade and then on top of that, you're not getting no playing time. You know, you're constantly being benched. Even when you look good, you're being benched. It's frustrating, man. Like I said, we can sit from be behind the TV screen and look into it and say, you know, well, these guys suck and this and that. But it's frustrating, man. If you play basketball and you know that you hot and all of a sudden your coach sits you down for a quarter, then you come back in cold, then he get upset with you because you can't hit shots. No, nah, man, I told you, man, over and over again, it, go it goes, it trickle down from the front office of the coach then to the players. The players only going to do what the coaches do. And everybody keep talking about D'Angelo, you know, well, you know, D'Angelo, you know, uh, he doesn't shoot enough. He doesn't pass enough. He's doing what Luke Walton tell him to do. Simple as that. The same thing Byron Scott did last year with him. That's what Luke Walton doing. Luke Walton tell him to pass first, get him more into a mindset of passing, and then be aggressive afterwards. So he's getting, he's trying to get other players involved. That's why he's never going to be the D'Angelo that he want to be. I feel like this, that you should just let him play. You let Lou Williams play. Why not let the young man play? And, and it's the thing. And, and I, I'm tired of hearing people say, well, we're developing. You know, we're not developing. If you're developing players, that means you're going to play the players to give them an opportunity to develop. But if you're not playing them, how are they developing? By sitting on the bench and watching Lou Williams go off, I like Kobe. Come on, man. That, that's what you're seeing. So they right now are so they showcasing Lou Williams and probably Nick Young too as well to see if somebody you know would, you know go after these players. But Lou Williams is probably the best thing that's on the team that we actually can make a trade for. But that's what they're looking at right now. And also I'm gonna talk about the um, I know the rumor came out about um. A.D. Anthony Davis and uh, Westbrook, you know, might join us in the future because that's what the agents are saying. A.D. already shot that down. He said he's not leaving New Orleans, and I wouldn't blame him. Why would I come here? You got a coach that's inexperienced that's already showing you that even if you come away, there's no guarantee that you're going to get time. You know what I mean? I don't know. He might get time, though, because A.D. But um, it, it's just terrible. And, and this is my thing, too, about those that keep saying that we tank him. All right, yeah, we tank him. All right, we, we, I, I'll give, I'll give y'all that. We'll tank him. But here's my problem with that tanking situation. Okay, just say we do get uh ball or or um somebody else. Just say we get one of these top top five players. We get the number one draft pick, right? Just say if we do. What in our right mind would we think that Lou Walton is going to give them thirty minutes? He's not giving D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randall, all them thirty minutes. So when we get a, a a draft pick, it's going to be the same scenario, the same exact scenario. We're going to play these guys 20, 20 minutes, and we're just going to roll with it. You can't, you can't get in the rhythm. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm and this is why I say I'm going to trickle way up to the front office. Because I'm starting to think Lou Walton is getting all this from Cub Check and, um, and uh, Jim Buss and them. The front office, the collective group. I'm, that's what I'm thinking now. Because ain't no way in the world you telling me that he's not letting D'Angelo Russell and them guys, them young guys play like they should play. Like they should be getting 30 minutes. There's no way in the world you cannot tell me that he's not letting these guys get 30 minutes. Whether we lose or not. Like, like matter of fact, last night we were getting blown out. Why not just go ahead and let them guys play 30 minutes? We were getting the crap beat out of us. Why not go ahead and let the young guys play? D'Angelo, JC, Brandon Ingram, um, Julius, and Larry Nance, or, or Zublock. 
Why not go ahead and let those six guys play and sit everybody else down? Just let them play. We're getting blown out. Let them go ahead and just finish the game out. Because you ain't calling no timeouts. You just letting them do whatever they want. So you already letting us know that y'all basically are tanking. You don't care because the rotation sucks. You don't call timeout when the times are needed. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, that's what it is. And I, I know for a fact, Walton is only doing this based on what the front office is telling them. That's the simple thing. But it's bad, and I'm going to tell you the reason why it's bad. Ain't no free agent, superstar free agent, going to want to come here. If they see that we like we we just terrible, they're not going to come here. And especially with the CBA now where small market teams can make the same amount of money now, why would I leave my, my team when I'm, I can make the same amount of money where I'm already at? And we got a chance to make the playoffs. Just to go to a team that's going to probably win, what, 25 games next year, if that? So it's crazy, man. So I, I just want to shoot down that Westbrook and um, Anthony Davis situation. Like I said, at the end of the day, the only way somebody's going to come over here if the Lakers actually show that they're going in the right direction. But right now, we're going back to the basement. And we're tanking. That, as simple as that, we're tanking. Because I watched Lou Walton's expression on his face when we were getting blown out by Phoenix. They all had the same suits on, and Lou Walton was talking to one assistant coach, and he was laughing and giggling. So I, I pay attention to everything in full detail. We're tanking, and, and that's what it is. And I'm serious, man. I know a lot of you guys like, well, you know, uh, you know, well, that's the best thing we got, Urban. We got no choice but to tank. I understand that, man. But after a while, if it, if it, after a while, you every year we've been tanking, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, when we going? Listen, this is my thing. If we just allow them, them, them six guys I just named to at least get 30 minutes, and everybody else just come off of that, off the you know 15 minutes, whatever it may be, then we can see where we really are. Because next year gonna be the same thing. You got to let the guys play to see what we have. If we don't let them play, how are we gonna know how good they are? How are we going to know what position they're actually, you know, actually um, more positive at? We're not playing them. So, at the end of the day, we don't know what we got, man. So, when people say that, you know, they're a bust, this and that, I, I, don't, I, don't, I tend not to agree with them. Because, like I said, going back to last year, I mean, well, this draft class, like I said, there was really nobody in the draft class. Just, what, three or four good players, average players at, at, at best. They weren't like a superstar, you know, like, okay, well, this guy will be a LeBron James type of person or Camilla Anthony. And also on Camilla Anthony, you know, he did say that the, the three teams that he would actually make a move to would be L.A., Cleveland, and uh, um, the Clippers. They're the only three teams that he would look forward to. But the only why Camilla Anthony want to come here because, number one, money, and it, it's, it's L.A. You know, that, that's simple as that. You know, he probably finishes years out here. That's if we get him. But I wouldn't even go after Camelo. I mean, I personally, like I said at the end of the day, man, I, I don't know what's going on with this squad, man. This squad is just, it's just terrible, man. And it's not, like I said, when I say squad, I'm talking about the whole organization, man. And I know these guys are frustrated. You come out there only playing 20 minutes. You you can't get into a type of flow that you want to get in because your coach is telling you. And I'm talking about D'Angelo Russell. And I, and before y'all come and say, oh, you're a D'Angelo Russell, uh, you know, uh, um, 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 you, you're, all in, you're, you're all up in D'Angelo Russell butt or you're a uh, D'Angelo Russell uh, penis rider. First and foremost, I'm not a big fan of D'Angelo Russell. So please do not come at me talking about, oh, you know, you just love D'Angelo Russell because... First of all, that's, that's not even a debate. You know what I mean? That's just somebody who don't have really nothing else to say, and they're just going to use that as an anchor to make it sound like they know what they're talking about when they don't. The players are not getting no playing time. The front office is basically tanking. They're looking to make trades, simple as that. Everybody's up for trade. I hate to say it, but that's what it's looking like. All the players are up for trade. And all these sites that bring all these dumb rumors out saying, oh, we're going to get Anthony Davis in a couple years, or Westbrook coming in a couple years. I tear all that crap down because those rumors are, are just flamboyant, man. It ain't nothing going to happen. You know, them rumors, they they just talking because then Anthony Davis, like I said, they came right out and shut it right down. Assuming they said it, I think it was Bleacher Report that came out and said it, Laker Nation came out and said it, but Laker Nation did come out after Anthony Davis did shut him down. He came, They came out and said that Anthony Davis said he's not leaving New Orleans. And I don't blame him. Why? You know what I mean? When you're that close to getting in the playoff, why leave? You know what I mean? The guy's the injured anyway, so, you know, it is what it is, but... I'm just frustrated, man, and I'm just being real, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't know what the Lakers are doing. I just know they're tanking, and I feel bad because some of these players might not be here at the end of the season. I said freaking next year, next season towards the All-Star break for Shucks. Matt Johnson, he want to be a part of the trade move, so he, <laughs> I don't know. He might get, hey, something might happen. I hate to say it, but something might happen, man. I told you these guys are not going to wait around for long. They got them stockholders, man. They got to make that money. When the stock will start cashing out, getting out of here, they're like, uh-uh, we, you know, we putting too much money into the organization. We want, you know, it's all about business at the end of the day. That's what people, fa the fans got to realize. It's about business. It's not about the, in the entertainment of the sport. It's about business. Simple as that. So with that being said, your man, everybody love like, share, subscribe, get in the comment section, tell me what you think. You know, uh, what the hell is going on with our boys? Y'all take care, and as always, have a blessed day.